the Mughal Empire, an ancient Gurkhani empire that was located within the Indian subcontinent. Founded in 1526, a tremendous amount of information regarding this group of warriors has subsequently been unearthed over the centuries. A wealth of archaeological information, which has offered a glimpse back into our distant past, revealing many things about this ancient people which, for a time, was lost in antiquity. However, although extensive archaeological exploration has unraveled many of the Mughals' mysterious existence, there remains a most perplexing enigma. In the 1980s, Smithsonian historian Emily Savage Smith embarked on a journey to acquire a set of perplexing ancient artifacts, now known as celestial spheres. Plotted upon the underside of a dome or hemispherical screen, the celestial sphere is a practical tool for astronomy even to this day allowing the observers to plot positions of objects in the sky when distances are unknown or trivial. Most, as one would presume, display a primitive understanding of astronomical arrangements. However, some reluctantly revealed to the academic world, and since quietly archived away from inquisitive souls, have stumped all who have attempted to explain them based solely upon modern historical conformities. The majority of celestial spheres acquired can be catalogued into two distinct types, seamed spheres and their more elaborate, thus greatly more problematic counterparts, seamless spheres. Seamed spheres are, or were, made by molding two halves of the sphere separately and then soldering them together. The artisans and astronomers would then collaboratively engrave the surface. Seamless spheres, however, are another thing entirely. Up until Savage Smith made her discovery, it was thought by virtually all within the academic community, including metallurgists the world over, that all examples of hollow metal celestial spheres were of the seamed type. This owing to the long-held belief that creating seamless hollow metal spheres was impossible. As it turns out, it isn't. The most exquisite surviving example of a hollow seamless celestial sphere is one that is said to have been made by a Mughal metallurgical master named Muhammad Salid Tatawi in 1631. Although conveniently, it is unknown just how he figured out how to make the sphere, or indeed fill it accurately with astronomical information we have only recently confirmed is accurate. It makes one wonder just how did he learn such a technique, if of course it was he who created it. With no evidence to suggest that the Mughals could have even cast the bronze needed to create the sphere. You have to wonder, just where did they get this information from? Were the ancient Mughals visited by a race of ancient extraterrestrial beings? Did they discover a relic, an artifact, left by a vastly more ancient lost civilization which they claimed as their own? Unfortunately, the subject of seamless celestial spheres is little known within mainstream antiquity, and as such, in the few places they are discussed, the facts are often distorted or even completely made up. They are most certainly out-of-place artifacts, which some have attempted to brush beneath a rug of convolution. We always perceive this method of concealment to be strong evidence of a conspiracy. Just who could have made the Mughal celestial spheres? And more importantly, how did they make them? Perhaps one day, we will find out the truth. The Nebra Sky Disk Found on the top of Middleburg Mountain in Germany, amongst a horde of Bronze Age relics, mostly dating to around 1600 BC. However, there is a possibility of this artifact actually being pre-flood. It is the oldest chart of the heavens in the world, but additionally, it displays an astonishing level of skill, creativity, astronomical knowledge, and indeed, accuracy. For a considerable time, reams of quote specialists attempted to discredit the Nebra sky disk as a fake. However, after numerous in-depth examinations of the artifact, it has reluctantly been academically accepted as authentic. It is a bronze disk about 32 centimeters in diameter with a diagram of the heavens embossed onto it in gold. It shows representations of the sun, moon, Pleiades, and three other crescents two presumed to be horizontal lines and the other a possible solar barge. 
It has been variously proposed that the disk was intended as an astronomical tool, and that through comparison of the skies and a visual display of the extremes of the rising and setting positions of the sun, it could be used to determine the time of year. In addition, it is proposed that it was used to calculate the difference between the solar and lunar cycles, in the form of adding a 13th lunar month, something which is required every two or three years. Could the Nebra sky disk be an extremely ancient relic, rediscovered by a people around 1600 BC? Partially decoded and used by these people, a group of German scholars who studied this archaeological gem released the following assumptive conclusion, quote, The sensation lies in the fact that the Bronze Age people managed to harmonize the solar and lunar years. We never thought they would have managed that. The functioning of this clock was probably known to a very small group of people." End quote. Also, according to German astronomer Wolfhard Schlosser of the Ruhr University in Bochum, based on the object, the Bronze Age sky gazers somehow already knew what the Babylonians would describe well over a thousand years later. Whether this was a local discovery or whether the knowledge came from afar is still not clear, Schlosser said. Is the Nebra sky disk an advanced pre-flood relic? With specialists pertaining to such assumptions regarding our history, it is often forgivable to doubt these modern-day attested explanations. Regardless, the sky disk is clearly an amazing object which, thankfully, still exists within the public eye.